Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Apple, Spotify, or Google, please leave a five-star rating and review. It helps support the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. This content is brought to you by Uphold, which makes crypto investing easy. You can buy, sell, trade, and earn cryptocurrencies in Uphold. I've been using this exchange since 2017. They have 10 plus million users, 250 plus cryptocurrencies, and they're available in 150 countries. You can also buy and sell precious metals and equities. As with all exchanges, you can buy and sell on them, but I highly recommend you custody your own crypto, not your keys, not your coins. If you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. All right, my friends, let's look at the price here before we talk about the news. Bitcoin sitting pretty comfortably above $21,000 right now. It is up near 23% from a seven-day perspective. Ethereum right now is at $1,580, up near 20% from a seven-day perspective. BNB is close to 300 bucks. It is up near 10% from a seven-day perspective. Um, XRP at 38 cents, up near 11% from a seven-day perspective. So we see the alts are moving with Bitcoin. The question is, is this a bear market rally for Bitcoin and will it roll over next week to lows again or even lower lows? You know, I don't know what scenario may play out. We still have some issues in the crypto market with Digital Currency Group and Gemini, and those things could be catalysts to drive the price even lower. I'm not saying I want that to happen. I'm saying that's a scenario that could play out. There's a probability. However, my hope is that this is Bitcoin's move to the retracement of thirty dollars to $40,000, at which point I'll be taking some profits on Bitcoin as well as altcoins. And we can expect the alts to move with Bitcoin. And I, I, it's, this is a similar pattern that played out in 2019 after the bottoming out of uh, Bitcoin and the, um, and the market in 2018. So I lived through that cycle and I took some profits in 2019 as well. So I'm hoping something similar plays out. However, it's not guaranteed. And we'll have to see what the Fed continues to do in the macro environment that we're in. But I hope, my friends, that we head to that retracement. I hope Bitcoin hits the 40, maybe 50, right? Uh, one can pray that that happens and you take some profits there. But, uh, you know, there's no guarantee, my friends. And we just have to wait and see how things play out. We have to let this rally prove itself. Bitcoin has to build support levels and then uh, keep working its way up. So let's hope the green continues. And uh, this could take a couple months for it to even reach forty to $50,000. All right, let's jump into the news. We got big Polygon Matic news. Many of you know I am super bullish on Polygon. I hold Matic and uh, uh, the Polygon team is doing a great job getting big time partnerships with Nike, Adidas, Reddit, and so forth. So there's a huge number of active users on Polygon and uh, big brands building NFTs and Web3 tech on Polygon. So I believe this coin is going to do really well in the next bull market. That's not financial advice, and you should do your own research on this. But there's a hard fork that is coming up tomorrow. So here's the headline, Polygon primed for hard fork aimed at reducing gas spikes. And uh, Polygon told Cointelegraph that the hard fork will take effect at block 38,189,056, which will be initiated without the influence of centralized actors. So we got confirmation this is happening. The um, upgrades will happen tomorrow. Uh, this is good news for devs and users and will make for a better user experience. So you don't really have to do anything here, and it's going to help address um, you know, gas fees and so forth. Now, many of you may not know what Polygon is. It is the layer two blockchain that is, helps Ethereum to scale um, is, is the TLDR. So here's a breakdown. Ethereum layer two scaling solution Polygon will undergo a hard fork on January 17th in order to address gas spikes and chain reorganization issues that, that have affected user experience on the Polygon proof of stake chain. So uh, sounds like it's going to be a good update great here. And uh, once again, I'm super bullish on this project, guys, because we got huge brands, Disney and all these folks building on the network. Um, and this is a huge adoption. And it once again, is helping the number two crypto in the market to scale. So uh, it has legs, it has the partnerships, it has the tech. Uh, so really, really bullish on this uh, token. Now, 
Here's some news I missed completely this week. So my Avalanche AVAX token holders, my bad. <laughs> but this is some big news. Amazon Web Services taps Avalanche to help bring blockchain technology to enterprises and governments. Avalanche is the first blockchain to form a partnership with Amazon's cloud computing platform. Talk about a partnership. If Amazon is partnering with you, you're doing something right. Now, in full disclosure, I probably have a small percentage of AVAX tokens. I actually swung traded a lot in the bull market because it was DeFi summer and these coins were popping off. So I swung traded for some you know decent profits because I wasn't an early investor in AVAX. I kind of got in late, but I swung traded to make some uh, money. But what a partnership. Uh, this is pretty big. And I'm actually, uh, not financial investment advice, looking to grab up some AVAX tokens and uh, wait for it to pop off in the bull market uh, You know, in, in a couple of years. So cloud computing platform Amazon Web Services will work with Ava Labs to try to bring wider adoption of blockchain technology by enterprises, institutions, and governments, the two companies announced in a blog post Wednesday. The partnership will make it easier for developers to launch and manage nodes on the Avalanche blockchain, as AWS will support for uh, Avalanche's infrastructure and decentralized applications. Ava Labs also plans to add subnet deployment, a network within a network, to the AWS marketplace, enabling both individuals and institutions to easily launch custom subnets. Here's a quote. It has been a huge boon for both individual and enterprise developers to be able to spin up nodes and test networks on the fly with AWS in whatever legal jurisdiction makes the most sense for them. Emin Gonsir, founder and CEO of Ava Labs, said in a blog post, Although the partnership with Ava Labs is AWS's uh, first partnership with a blockchain project, several other blockchains, including Ethereum and other smaller ones, all already use AWS to power their networks. Uh, so pretty, pretty big news here. And uh, once again, I will be looking to add more AVAX to my portfolio because I have next to nothing right now. Um, but once again, not financial advice, advice guys. You, you know, you got to do your own research. I highly recommend you look beyond just this news and see what else they're doing. Now, we got some good news as it relates to crypto fundraising. So we all know last year's bear market and the price tumbling down and all the collapses really put a damper on crypto fundraising, right? We saw a lot of money come in in the bull market even the first half of last year, but you know, people got scared, people are waiting to see what was going to happen with all the collapses, FTX, Celsius, and so forth. But things are starting to pick up. So funding roundup, this is some uh, BlockWorks, funding, g funding gains momentum in second week of 2023. CyberX landed an impressive $15 million in funding from Foresight Ventures despite the long bear market. So guys, this is the news that you really want to pay attention to. It's not sexy. It doesn't make the big headlines, right? But when you look at what these uh, institutional investors are putting their money in, they're putting into crypto. They're putting into different projects, right? Why? Do they want to lose their money? No, they want to make money. They see this as the future, the future tech and the valuations of both the companies and the coins to go up. Now, in order for the companies to do well, what needs to happen? Further adoption of the coins and the values of the coins to go up. So, P folks sometimes don't put the two and two together. They're like, oh, you know, they're investing in this company. Yes, but why, right? What is the thesis? It's so important to understand that. So CyberX plans to use its latest financing to expand its team internationally with a sp uh, specific focus on its Asian and North American markets on continuing to integrate DeFi protocols into its network. Uh, here's a quote. Liquidity is fundamental for further developments in this nascent crypto industry. It is pivotal to have experienced market makers like CyberX to retain market efficiency. Forrest Bai, CEO of Foresight Ventures, said in a statement. Here's another quote. We believe CyberX has the advanced technology experience team and extensive market knowledge to emerge at the forefront of the competition, which is why we have made this substantial investment of $15 million into their future, he said. A social cryptocurrency wallet dubbed the Easy Company 
also secured a large amount of funding, closing a $14.2 million deal with investors, including lobbying, or excuse me, lobby capital, relay ventures, and sixth man ventures, among others. So once again, another uh, crypto wallet here getting funding. Why? Because this is the future. They see beyond the bear market. They see future bull cycles coming and the, and the ability to make money and the uh, continued adoption of this technology. So here's another um, one that I want to highlight with you guys. MSafe closed a $5 million seed round led by Jump Capital with participation from Circle Ventures, Coinbase Ventures, uh, and a bunch of other companies. And they are a wallet company. Um, so guys, look at what's happening right? These companies are getting funding. If nobody believed in crypto, if crypto was a scam, a fad and whatever, right? And it was only, you know, uh, what the, the headlines say, crypto is dead and so forth. But smart money, institutional money, they know how this works. They don't care about headlines. They don't care about all that. Uh, what Jim Cramer is saying, they know there's money to be made here. This is the future. And just like they invested in uh, web 1.0 and 2.0 they're doing the same for 3.0 i i hope uh you know those of you who are watching or listening you know you understand what i'm saying here guys and i you've seen my interviews i've talked to the hedge fund guys i've talked to michael Lang, i've talked to ralph pal i've talked to dan tapiero mark yusko and all these guys and and dan um moorhead and so forth guys they they're making investments despite all this stuff it's it's crazy what's happening and but I, and I I'm, I'm I'm putting emphasis on this because I know people sometimes see headlines on TV or on on the, on in the newspaper right and then they get scared and they're like oh man the New York Times said crypto's dead oh man time magazine said crypto I don't know whatever it is done right guess what people said the same thing about the internet right and and uh, about social media and so forth but technology disruption it, they can't stop it it, we're in the next industrial revolution here. Now, here's an example of that industrial revolution. The Central Bank of Iran reportedly cooperating with Russian government to jointly issue a new stablecoin backed by gold. Wow. This is wild. Iran and Russia are among the countries that banned their residents from using cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and stablecoins like Tether for payments. Folks, it's, whether it's CBDCs or stablecoins, notice what's taking place, right? Everything on the blockchain. On the blockchain. So they're building a stablecoin. What is that going to run on? The old school internet? You know, like a website? <laughs> no. They like PayPal? No. It's going to run on blockchain and backed by gold. And look, there's going to be different things happening in different parts of the world, but I want you to see they are taking the tech. And uh, th th I think Bitcoin's going to be a part of this as digital gold. And uh, different, like I said, different countries are going to do different things. But this is just an example of the future that's coming, the token economy, my friends. And speaking of stable coins, we've got a report here. Stablecoin regulation is Congress's top priority, says Bitwise General Counsel. Stablecoin regulation, namely about reserve reporting and liquidity requirements, has been a long time coming. This is from... Uh, let me get you his full name here, Catherine Dowling, oh, excuse me, her full name, excuse me, a, a general counsel and CCO at Bitwise Asset Management. So I think that comes as no surprise. I think this is going to be the year of the stablecoin regulation as well as possibly uh, clear, comprehensive regulations, because after the collapses we saw last year, after all the... Um, nonsense with different companies like Celsius and FTX, they're going to want to get this in shape. And stable coins, I think they're very concerned about stable coins because that's going to compete with CBDCs. Plus, you don't want you know every mom and pop shop launching a stable coin and you don't know if they have the reserves and what they're doing, right? They have to have the reserve or that's be that becomes a big, big time risk. Now, here we got... Uh, Now, we got news here that uh, the folks at Osprey are looking for their chance to grab up GBTC or Grayscale because they know Grayscale and Digital Currency Group are in a bad spot. 
Osprey is a competitor to Grayscale. And uh, here we got a quote, if appointed as GBT's manager, Osprey said it would slash the trust management fee by roughly 75%. So, you know, they want to take over Grayscale, but I, I, I don't know, Barry Silbert, man, I, I tweeted at you. I said, uh, go call up BlackRock and let them buy you over, man. Let Gem Genesis get their uh, bailout and the Gemini folks get their funds back. And, uh, you know, at least you'll have the backing of BlackRock and BlackRock already has a Bitcoin spot trust. It, it will be the merging that will help uh, save Gemini and, and Grayscale and the market from any further disasters. Right. I hope I hope they, they do that because I don't think they're in a good spot. I think Digital Currency Group is on its way out, guys. I, I know people are not going to like that. I said that, but I'm telling you what I'm hearing in different circles um, and and Genesis is a big hole in digital currency groups balance sheet. It's a billion dollar over a billion dollar hole. That's not good. I mean, and and the SEC is going is coming after them. So they're not in a good spot. The best thing to do is go go call up Larry Fink of BlackRock and get a bailout or Osprey. I don't know, but I don't even know Osprey's books and how you know if they're in a good spot. But we'll see what happens. Finally. Some not so good news. I can't believe these clowns are back at it again. The founders of Three Hours Capital, Zhu Su and Kyle Davis, and the two founders of CoinFlex have launched a new project, GTX, which is raising a seed fund of $25 million to trade claims from creditors. Su Zhu acknowledged the news to Wu Blockchain. Yes, no comment, just busy building it. Good Lord, if I could stop these fools from getting involved again, I would. But what are you going to do? If you are, if you know anybody who's giving money to, to these folks, please tell them don't give them money. And if you know, I would be careful if you know of any fund or a company that's getting money from these guys, stay away. Look what they did with Three Hours Capital. Go, go read it up, right? They, they were using the funds in a wrong way, being very... Uh, well, they mismanaged the money, of course. These guys should be blacklisted, but you know, uh, that's outside of my control. If I could blacklist them, I would, but this is, this is not good. So, GTX hopes to unlock the $20 billion crypto claims market, fill the empty in the cryptocurrency market after FTX left, and enter the $2 trillion stock securities lending market. It will be launched within two to three months. Yeah, um, I, I'm gonna stay away from this. I'm not. Even, I wouldn't touch this with a 10 foot pole or 20 foot pole. These guys are. I, th I think it's clear notorious scammers, and um, I hope people are not stupid to give them millions of dollars again, because we're gonna have the same issue over and over. It's it's unbelievable. Anyway, guys, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Share the podcast, and I'll talk to you all later.